this is it. This is the movie that I hope turns around the bad year the Asian horror genre has had in 2020. We are zero from six this year. Can this movie be the first decent Asian horror film of 2020? Or did I set my expectations far too high? Watch on to find out. Hi, I'm the Artie Dance from Asian Film Fans and welcome to this review of the Taiwanese comedy horror zombie-ish type film, Get the Hell Out. In a nutshell, a rabies-like virus is suspected of being spread by a chemical plant who are destroying a seaside community. Set in the Taiwanese parliament, a politician trying to shut the plant down gets into a scuffle with her opponent and journalists and is subsequently banished. She then convinces the parliament's security guard to run in her place while she advises him. But he is swayed by her opponent and starts to support the plant. When the Taiwanese president is due in parliament to decide on the fate of the plant, all hell breaks loose. He is rabid and starts to bite as many people as he can, who then instantly turn into rabid zombie-like creatures and then bite more people. I think by now, you know how zombie movies work. There's a little bit more to this that involves a secret worker for another government organization and the antidote of the virus being in the blood of the candidate. First up, it sounds pretty cool, right? It's a funky, fresh comedy take on the zombie genre. But f me dead, there's something tragically wrong with this film. From the incessant flashing of lights that will no doubt trigger seizures, to the pop culture references that are a few generations too old for the target audience, the generally completely unlikable characters, video game-like presentation that's more annoying than cool, and stupidly overcomplicated storyline for a movie of this type, and all you're left with is a 100 minute movie that you'll barely make it through. It's always a bad sign when you get 20 minutes into a movie and you can't wait for it to end so you can do something else. And the weirdest thing is, I like these type of movies. I love the high energy crazy Japanese action and horror movies like Yakuza Weapon and Lust of the Dead. So it's really strange that this movie didn't connect with me at all. There are a few moments of genuine comedy in this film. The problem is, I'm writing this review script 24 hours after I've seen the film and I'm struggling to remember what they are without referring to the movie again. And that's not a good sign. While I did mention that all the characters were generally unlikable, there actually were two characters who were pretty good. The dad and the HR manager. The couple of scenes with just those two in them are quite funny and give an indication of what the career for a public servant is like after 25 years. And indeed, that's the most memorable element of this film, that it is a social commentary here about both career public servants and politics in general. Taiwanese filmmakers aren't exactly subtle when it comes for their dislike of mainland China's CCP. It was obvious in the film Detention, and it's obvious here. And I'm fine with that. In fact, I really enjoyed that element of the film. It deals with local corruption and the ridiculousness or pointlessness of the role of most politicians. But Detention did it far better. While I normally love high energy, fast paced, cleverly edited movies, this movie falls flat. In general, it's the overall excessive tone, excessive flashing, excessive noise, excessive idiocy. It's just too much. The most confusing thing for me was who is this film targeted at? Some of the pop culture references, such as throwbacks to animation show The Simpsons, TV action show 24, and classic spaghetti western The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, seem out of place. Sure, I got those references, but there are about a dozen more recent references and memes that I didn't get, which then makes me believe that the people who understood those references wouldn't have gotten the ones that I did. That leaves us with a mess of a movie where only certain segments of the audience can enjoy certain parts of the movie, and that makes no sense to me. Throw this crap on the pile that includes Impedigore, Yanin, The Bridge Curse, Peninsula, The Closet, and Howling Village. The Korean movie The Call and the Chinese horror movie Perilous Internet Ring are now our only hopes. And when I'm relying on a Chinese horror movie to be the savior of horror, then we're in real trouble, regardless of the fact it has a Japanese director. My recommendation is avoid. 
2020 has been a shit year for horror movies. If you've seen it, what did you think? Thank you for watching this review. Please don't forget to press the like button and consider subscribing to support the channel.